Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And uh, it's time for a little bit of history. I'm going back to the year 1967 to tell you about uh, something that happened on this day. Uh, a, um, well, the death of two young women, 19-year-old girls, who lost their lives on this day, 1967, in a place called Montana's Glacier National Park. Uh, this is really, um, I, I would say, you know, things that happen mostly outside Nigeria. Uh, you would rather, you would rarely ever get to see black people, you know, in situations like this. Mostly because black people don't go to a national park or you know that kind of reserve and camp, you know, and put themselves in, a, you know, in a, I don't know what those things are called where they, you know, get in under it and then zip it up. Those camping, you know, tents, tent, exactly. Um, that's not, you know, very common for black people. But on this day, 1967, uh, two of them. Uh, their names, Julie Helgerson and Michelle Coons, were both murdered by grizzly bears. Uh, the bears had attacked them, you know, miles apart from each other while they were asleep in their tents. And, um, you know, their injuries led to both of them losing their lives. Um, it also, of course, led to the, um, you know, change in policies. This is, this is uh, something that had never happened in 57 years that the park had been in existence. Um, it also then led to the, you know, change in different policies uh, to ensure that it never repeated itself. You know, at that time, there weren't uh, rules, there weren't certain signs and warning signs, you know, in the park that, you know, told people where to go and what to do and, you know, what times of the day that, they, you know, they were safe. Um, and so all those things had to eventually come into play, um, you know, after, you know, these attacks. Uh, one of them, of course, uh, according to reports, was... Uh, dragged about 400 feet from the original campsite um, where she was mauled by the bear. Um, it also says that the park and uh, yeah, people in the park <coughs> neglected certain signs at that time to protect people who visited the park until these attacks. Um, and so, of course, it led to the life, uh, led to the you know death of Julie Helgerson and Michelle Coons on this day in 1967. Hmm. This was a very sad story. Both of them, 19-year-olds, both of them went camping, you know, and it's unfortunate that, you know, even though they had been found alive, especially Kuhn, she eventually died from her injuries. Such a sad one. And the yeah, there was that a book was eventually written about yeah, that, the Night, Night of, of the, the Grizzlies. Grizzlies, yes. Right. Really sad, you know, and once again, you know, it's, it's really just white people's stuff because you, you would barely ever see you know, African Americans or, you know, Nigerians putting themselves at that type of but risk. But why? You know? Why not? Because we like life. Back? You know, I think, I think white people got to a place where, you know, a lot of the basic amenities and the things that they need for survival and to enjoy life are available. You know, they're there. And so you they start to look like for... Right now. <laughs> <laughs> they start to look for ways that they can enjoy themselves that sometimes are a little bit risky. There are certain <laughs> things that you see white people doing like, nah, <laughs> not me. <laughs> you see certain videos online and you <laughs> never see a black person try it out because, oh nope. <laughs> I don't <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> not been there, done that. It's just a no. <laughs> that's not me, you know. But white people really have so much, you know, privilege for just being, you know, white. So, life is so easy, you know. So they start to look for do more you know daring ways to excite Do you, do you know that if you are abroad, some people who can be very sensitive will say you're being racist? Do you, no, it's do not, it's, it's, do it's you facts. It's not, it's not but racist. But do you realize that? It is facts. <laughs> it is simply facts. You know, they, they start to look for more ways to excite themselves, you know, because every other thing there is interesting. But black people, you know, the wala that we have to deal with every day is enough. So I saw, I, saw, I saw this comic by um, Trevor Noah. He says, talking about camping, he says, when he went to the U.S., his friend, you know, he comes from South Africa. He says his friends told him, oh, let's go camping. And he said, what's that? Oh, we'll go to the bush. We won't have access to water or electricity. He's like, but that's my reality back home. <laughs> I, I left to escape. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty well, much, going... pretty much, you know, you you will rarely get to see, you know, um, you know, this um, Jeff Bezos and um, going camping. No, no, not going camping now. Going out, you know, out of space, you know, to the border of you know space and all of that. Uh -huh. you, eh, you know, a lot of black people are like, nah, you know, <laughs> we're good here. Especially, <laughs> I mean, the cost. Thousands yeah, the, the of dollars. Cost, the cost is inclusive. You know, bungee jumping. Yeah, you <laughs> might see some black people doing that. You might see some people black people skydiving. But there's some really, really well, crazy what, what things that I see. What activities do you think we like here? Apart here. from partying. 
we don't have the resources to to enjoy on that level. So we, we don't have, have resources um, to enjoy. No, we don't. We don't have the, oh you know, the resources to enjoy tourism on that level. I feel hurt. That's why you know. That's why you know. There's funny enough if you go to South Africa, which I've never been, but you will see uh, there's there's things called shark cages where you know you get into a cage. It is you know tourism. You I wish you all the best. And you go deep into the water, a couple of feet you... into the water, where there's sharks swimming around, all the just to enjoy best. you know the scenery. Um, say hello to them for me. <laughs> Let's talk about um, the first woman marine in United States history, 1918. Her name is Alpha May. She was 40 years old and she achieved this feat two years before women even had the right to vote. So it's okay. a pretty straightforward story. A woman in history who, you know, had that remarkable feat of going ahead to enlist as a U.S. Marine. Um, the, the good thing is that she joined the Marine Corps Reserve on the 13th of August, 1918. Um, she was the first of over 300 women to enlist in the Marine Corps Reserve, and that's during the First World War. Um, Jackson's first duties was as a, as a you know, clerk at the headquarters Marine Corps. She managed records of other female reservists who joined after she did at the end of uh, the First World War, um, unfortunately, like all other services. Um, you know, they began to a process of disenrollment. But history will forever remain, rem, remember the name of Offa Mae Johnson as the first female Marine Corps in the United States. All right. Um, and of course, over time, that has changed. There's a lot of uh, more females who join the Marine Corps um, and, you know, go to war even. And they celebrate her, you know, every now and then. So um, she's a pace setter and uh, thanks for her service, I guess. All right. Let's take a break here and we'll return to discuss uh, the cost of the ban on Twitter in Nigeria. It's going on for about two months now. Uh, the federal government says that ban would be lifted soon. But just how much have the Nigerian government, have the Nigerian people especially, and Nigerian businesses lost in that time? Stay with us.